well, I do see like serial serial viewers. Oh, so okay, okay. We're <laughs> we are live now. We are live. Uh, hello, everybody in the uh, Millennial Affiliate Entrepreneur Group. Uh, Levi Scott here, and I am with Diana Castillo. Diana, uh, you have been doing affiliate marketing for some time now. Is that correct? That is correct, Levi. For a while, I have been online since 2007, so I'm an online granny, to put it in a way. <laughs> I like that. Well, online granny, and uh, so I mean, with that, you definitely have some wisdom in in this area. That's for sure. Yeah, some experience, like good experience and bad experience as well. Tell tell us a little bit about uh, how you got started uh, doing all from the beginning, how you got started in this online craziness and uh, where you're at now. Okay, sure. Well, I started back on 2007. Well, now I speak English. Back on the days I was speaking Spanish. I'm, I'm no native English speaker, so my first language is Spanish. You know, at that time, blog was like the best thing ever. Everybody was blogging. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine told me about this and I was like, really? You can make money online? And he told me like, yeah, you can actually write about anything you want uh -huh. and people are going to pay you. I'm like, really? Yeah. So at that time, my main focus was my blogs. I have, at that time, a small network, and I was making money with Google AdSense because I don't know if you were around, but the, everything crashed on the online marketing. So people basically, sorry, Google basically rescued the online marketing with Google AdSense. And at that time, they were paying really well. Mm -hmm. Affiliate marketing wasn't that good at that time mm -hmm. because clickbank was basically the only opportunity there weren't that many cpa networks as today and well one of my main networks right now is click funnels click mm -hmm. funnels wasn't wasn't even around so i right. was doing pretty well with niche blocks i noticed that you are talking about this on your group so love it yeah i still do i still am heavily involved in, in the niche blogging well, so do I. So people get confused because now there are so many ways to get traffic. Back in the days, it was mainly Google because, mm -hmm. yeah, there was like Facebook and other social networks. I don't know if you remember MySpace and oh, High yeah. Five. It was, it was all about MySpace. <laughs> so there were like the powerful network like yeah. back in the days. And I remember that Everybody was talking about YouTube, but they weren't sure if they're going to be there for a while because it wasn't profitable. Like later on, Google buy it. So, you know, like mm -hmm. things were different and everybody was doing like black hat SEO, like to <laughs> rank. It was like really easy. Like, That's you know, I'm about to start with in black hat for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so everybody was like really crazy, like making money online and mm -hmm. not being so active on social networks as on today. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was pretty anonymous. And part of my success was because at that time, you know, there wasn't like a girl power like today. Right. Every so everybody thought that I was a guy until I started telling everybody like, no, I'm actually a girl. I'm a really lovely girl. And everybody was like, really? So that's became viral because everybody was mm -hmm. like, yeah, there is this queen talking about graphic design, web design and how to mm -hmm. do blogging. And everybody was like, all guys were like getting really, really crazy. So I went <laughs> like viral. So it was like a cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but at that time, you know, I was doing everything in Spanish. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say it was a mistake, but yeah, it was. You it think so? I really, you know, really. I wanted, so. you, I wanted to ask you about that too. If there was kind of a, a niche opportunity, even within the Spanish speaking community, because I know you said that's how you got your start. Do you do a lot of your affiliation now in, in English or is it, where are you at with that? Well, I will say like everything is like 90% English and 10% in Spanish. 
the thing with the Spanish market, okay, I'm going to be talking about Latin America because mm -hmm. Europe and U.S., it's totally different. Like here in Latin America, right now I'm in Colombia, in Medellin. Mm -hmm. I'm Panamanian, but I recently moved here. I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. I'm trying to have this digital nomad life, so it's cool. Yeah, so yeah. the thing with Latin America, and that is something that I actually learned here mm -hmm. because Panama, our currency is the dollar, and right. we have access to credit cards, everything as in America. It's actually Panama, it has like the same prices and everything as in small town in America, maybe as mm -hmm. Miami, which is not a small town. But when I came to Medellin, I realized that there is another currency and people are not used to pay with their credit cards. Mm -hmm. And whenever you mention their dollars, they're like, wow, dollars, that's a lot of money. <laughs> I'm like, wow, really? I don't think so. <laughs> so you know, it was, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Uh -huh. um, with, with the credit card thing that you mentioned, um, you actually had a really cool quote that I picked out of those uh, video, or excuse me, those uh, voice messages that you sent me on. But it's not an ATM machine. You have to make it work. I, and that just stuck with me, actually. I've, I've been thinking about that for like the last week. I was like, yeah, that's extremely true. So we have a lot of people uh, who get online and they get kind of started. In, even if it's not affiliate marketing, they think that things are just supposed to click overnight and you're suppo supposed to start making all this money. And you're right. It, it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. That is correct. It doesn't happen like that, but well, this is like the internet dream. You know, it's go beyond, above and beyond the American dream. It's the internet mm -hmm. dream. Everybody is like, yeah, I know that I can make money online because that's a fact. Okay. When I started 10 years ago, I remember my dad was like, really? Are you going to be making money online? I don't think so. And he got impressed when I received my first Google check. Imagine Google was paying by check at that time. Even PayPal wasn't that powerful. So uh -huh. now everybody knows that they can make money online. The thing is that they do not treat this seriously. You mm -hmm. have to understand that this is a business. So you need to invest either time or money or both right but you need to treat this as a business but because you are not investing that much money because hey uh the way i sell this it's like you can start your business with zero investment because you can get click funnels for free you can get a weber which is the autoresponder that i use for free 30 days trial and mm -hmm. everything is like free 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 and People are expecting immediate results, but right. they're not taking action. Most of us, because even I suffer from it sometimes, have this paralysis by analysis. The analysis like, is, paralysis. Oh, yes. I think we all have experienced that at some time. Yes. Yeah, because now <laughs> that's another thing that back in the days, everything was on Google. And mm. now I have a lot of information on YouTube. Facebook groups are like crazy. Everybody's selling this information mm -hmm. everybody's doing like a facebook live oh my god the instagram stories and there is like a lot of information that people don't even get started they know mm -hmm. that it's possible because they have seen other people mm -hmm. that are making money online but for some reason they do not take action right Right. Actually, and I'm going to pause and get up actually because I have to get up real quick and I want to show everybody a book that I was, it actually goes exactly with what you're saying. So give me just a second. No worries. So this is, this is actually one of my favorite books. And anytime somebody asks for a book recommendation on, um, I don't know, really anything, whether it's business related or other. Uh, this this is one of my favorite books I've ever read. It's uh, called 50 Scientifically Proven Ways to Be Persuasive. 
<laughs> and it, it actually, I, I mentioned this because it goes along with exactly what you just mentioned, uh, along with the analysis paralysis. So what happens when we are presented as human psychology basically boils down to this as far as what happens when we are presented with too many opportunities. An abundance of opportunities isn't always a good thing because I figured this out actually because I don't know if you knew this, Diana, but I actually uh, do a lot of fashion design. And my first clothing brand that I, I launched was called Division Noir Clothing. And I was so excited that I had like 50 different items that I launched like menswear, women's wear, wallets, hats, sweatshirts, everything. And as soon as I launched all this, I was so excited because I was like, I have such an array of stuff. It's going to be flying off the shelves. I have something for everybody. And psychologically, I didn't realize that this was basically analysis paralysis in effect. People saw too much. So yeah. when a human being has too many opportunities and they're presented with too many options, they're less likely to act. So with that said, for anybody watching, don't try to do everything. Focus on one or two things and get really good at those one or two things. Diana, would you agree or disagree with that? I totally, I totally agree. agree. The thing is the thing that, is for example, in one of the posts that I did the other day, I don't remember if I put it on your blog, in your, sorry, on your Facebook group, mm -hmm. it's like that, that you don't need to be everywhere. You just need to be where you're target market is mm -hmm. like and the other thing is that you need to be where you feel comfortable right if you don't feel comfortable in front of the camera hey don't be on a facebook live but maybe you can do a youtube video with a really good powerpoint mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. don't like your voice for whatever reason but you are a good writer hey go with the with the blogs a lot of people ask me like mm -hmm. how do you get traffic my main source of traffic right now, it's Pinterest. And Pinterest. everybody's blowing their mind, like, Pinterest? Really? I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I found out a niche. I'm a graphic designer, so mm -hmm. I do my own stuff. So I find out a way, like, I can promote myself on Pinterest. I'm not that social. I cannot spend, you know, like, a lot of time being on a lot of Facebook group, although some of my friends told me like, yeah, every, every single time they check their Facebook, I'm around. Yeah. But, you know, I feel more comfortable writing my blog posts, post those things like images related on Pinterest and mm -hmm. recording YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Why? And you know, you mentioned too, uh, you know, prior to us getting on this, that you were you were actually pretty nervous about doing a Facebook Live. So, you know, for anybody who who is watching this now or will watch the replay, look at look at Diana, this beautiful lady, just absolutely <laughs> killing it. She was nervous to get on, and you would never know that you are or were nervous. I'm sure you got all the jitters out now, but uh, it's a good lesson, and even just you know stepping out of your comfort zone and you know kind of making things happen. That is correct. You never know where you are going to be. You know, um, uh, I, I, so some of the tools that you said or something you like to do is kind of with all of this said, something you like to do for people is kind of break all of that down and uh, present people with the tools that they need to just kind of go so they can kind of just break through all the clutter and just, you know, get something started. And that's... I think that's important, especially for money making on the internet. Is there is there any tools that you personally use that you think somebody should get a jump on using, um, especially if they're just starting out? Yes, um, actually, I would like to tell tell you you something before I go to that. Okay, Absolutely. it doesn't matter on what niche you are, because I do have several niches. The thing is that. I used to be a university professor, so I, I really love to teach, right? So it doesn't matter which niche do you decide to go with. First of all, you need to feel passionate about it because you're going to be doing a lot of research about the niche or the topics that you're going to be covered. Okay, yeah. so that's something really important. Yep. Yeah, I know that sometimes we sell the dream that it's going to be set it and forget it. Yes, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about it in a moment. So that's something really important. So mm -hmm. if you decide to start a blog 
or a Facebook group or something about X, Y, C niche, make sure that you feel passionate about it. Right. Uh, after that, then you can go with whatever tool you feel comfortable. I don't say that these are the tools that you need to use mm -hmm. because maybe, I don't know, tomorrow there's going to be something even better or easier, right. you know, like. And it's like so, every day there's 50 new yeah. tools. Yeah, exactly. Every single day, there are like 50 new tools. Right now, I'm learning about, for example, chatbots. Me too. <laughs> because everybody's like on Facebook now, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is a way, how do I sell the business? Mm -hmm. Because I was in a financial struggle not so long ago. Mm -hmm. I told you I'm private that I lost a hundred grand. So yeah. it was like a, a lot of money. Yeah. So I decided like, okay, I need to make money, but you know, I was broken. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a penny to invest, but I do have time to invest and mm -hmm. I do have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the tools that I use, if I'm going to set up a blog, I use WordPress. I really love WordPress. It's SEO friendly. It's super easy right now. So I'm going to go with WordPress. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is a plugin in WordPress. This is a paid plugin, which is called Bloom from Elegant Teams, because you need to capture your leads. Mm -hmm. Again, remember that this is a business. So a business is made of repeat customers. Yeah. For example, if you go to a restaurant, that restaurant needs to have repeat customers. Right. So since I need to have repeat customers, I need to capture my leads. So I use this plugin that is called Bloom. Mm -hmm. It's from Elegant Teams. And then I use my autoresponder, which is Aweber. Why did I use Aweber? Because I know that there might be other people that saying like, yeah, I use ConvertKit, I use ActionEdX, I use MailChimp, etc." First of all, it's the ones that I feel comfortable with. It's affiliate friendly. Yeah. And since I'm promoting affiliate products, and most of my things are automatic right right now. I cannot get chances like using other, you know, other autoresponders. Mm -hmm. So that's something really, really, really important. So you basically take your, your captured leads from this plugin you call uh, Bloom, Bloom, and they're, they're basically sent directly to a Weber in which I assume you, you drop people basically into a e email drip campaign. Is that kind of along the line? That is correct. So explain Bloom a little bit more for anybody out there who's kind of curious about that. Okay, Bloom is a really, really easy plugin. It's by Elegant Teams. It's basically a pop-up. I know that everybody says like, yeah, pop-ups are annoying. Okay, but Bloom has like three types of opt-in forms. Mm -hmm. Okay, it has the pop-up, which you can put like a delay. It's really easy to set up like, okay, I, this is the way how to, I set it up and I'm going to explain why. I say like, okay, the person is going to land on my page because he or she is interested on that topic. Mm -hmm. I let that person read the article or part of it. So my delay is between three to five seconds because I don't want to be annoyed like in front of the person right now, like sign me up because right. that person is going to close it because he or she is supposed to be enjoying my article. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I put. You can put the same up in four on the sidebar, but I really do not suggest it because now everybody's on the mobile and yeah. the sidebars are like on the bottom of the page. So it's totally useless. And you can put exactly the same up in uh, below the post. So the right. person, for any reason he or she decide not to sign in, just know you have a second chance to capture the leads. Exactly, exactly. I, I kind of do the same thing with uh, some of my niche blogs. Uh, and I have to ask you because I, I think everybody's kind of sick of this at, at this point, but the GDPR, have you become uh, compliant with that on your website or are you just kind of like, screw it? Where I totally are? screw it. <laughs> I totally, totally screw it. Like I receive a lot of emails about it, but to be honest, I really do not receive any changes. I oh. really do not email anybody telling anything because 
there is a huge unsubscribe button. Like if you don't want to be here, you don't want to know anything about me, you can definitely unsubscribe. Yes, yeah. So do you, uh, I know you mentioned that you, you kind of have become pretty big in click funnels now, yeah? That is correct. What do you, so uh, explain kind of where you're at with ClickFunnels right now, because I'm pretty sure ClickFunnels have come up in every single live interview I've done now. So I think people are kind of getting the gist that ClickFunnels can be pretty profitable. Oh my God. Well, the way I, dis I discovered ClickFunnels is because I was making, I'm still making good money with Google AdSense. I'm making mm -hmm. over 2K a month, which is pretty good for Google AdSense, especially because yeah. it's basically set it and forget it. Right. But some of my, my friends were telling me, like, well, now that you're on the English market, why don't you try to do affiliate marketing? I was like, oh, affiliate marketing? I really do not have, like, a, the best experience on the Spanish market. Although I make some sales, the thing is with the affiliate marketing in Spanish is that we do not have that many credit cards. Yeah. And we are not too used to put them online or wait for a CD or a DVD mm -hmm. or whatsoever. We are not to use used to do that so i start blogging about the tools that i use and boom the first sales happen i was like wow this this really works mm -hmm. so i was using another plugin for my wordpress blogs which is optimized press that was the one that i was using to build my membership areas mm -hmm. And my landing pages. But the thing with Optimized Press is that the support is not that great, at least for me, because I'm building these pages and basically these membership sites every single day. Right. And I don't know if you noticed, like, for example, the other day, Google Chrome just decided to make an update and now the videos are, are in autoplay. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't notice that actually. Oh, yeah. So I was like, you know what? I There must be a better solution. Mm -hmm. So my budget changed and circumstances changed. So I learned about ClickFunnels. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to. Yeah. So I, you know, I was hooked by the 14 day free trial. Yeah. And here I am using ClickFunnels. And then I learned about these affiliated affiliate business in a box and I was like well that totally makes sense to me because the way as I mentioned before the way I'm marketing the mm -hmm. business is that you can start with zero investment I'm like okay with click funnels it is really easy and simple to share a funnel that's something that I cannot do with optimized press if I share with you with my optimized press you need to set everything and I'm like, wow, it's really easy. It's user friendly, and that's the other uh, thing that I that I noticed that everybody knows that you can make money online, but not everybody knows how to set up a website. Right. Although it is easier now than before, not everybody knows how to set up a website. And it, and in ClickFunnels, you have everything like the hosting the autoresponder if you decide to go with action edX the landing pages the membership areas uh, the payment processors everything and I was like wow this is like kind of my this is something that I need to do so yeah. I start you know making my research about this and I talk with other friends about these products because you know, I don't know, is this a coincidence on Loki? But they were on, on the need of having something like click funnels. And I told like, hey, do you want to create your own landing pages? Everything drag and drop. And they were like, Yeah, that's a dream come true. I was like, Well, you know that you can use this, and it's pretty easy and really simple to train someone. Come on. I'm a web designer and I have built so many websites, mm. and I think that the most painful part of the process is that when you need to train your customer. Right. Oh my God, when you need to explain him or her how to do some changes on the website. And that's another thing that if you're using WordPress and for some reason your team is not compatible with the latest changes, oh Lord. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. So yeah. I learned about click funnels and I learned about the forty percent commission that you have with your recurring payments. And I'm like, wow, this is a real business. You can actually make a business. Because those payments are upwards of two ninety seven a month, right? If somebody's using the, the full package that you're yeah, making what a hundred my math is absolutely horrible but you're making a pretty a 40 percent is a good amount of money yeah it's, it's 180 with 67 cents i have him on my memory because i love whenever i saw that <laughs> that <laughs> amount so i'm like wow that's really impressive and the other thing that they actually have because of this sticky cookie i never heard about that before these guys it's like if russell Brunson decide to do a webinar Mm -hmm. And you have my cookie and you decide to make a purchase, boom, the commission is there. Right. So that's something that I really, really love. I feel like, quite honestly, I feel like uh, I've gone down such a similar path that I think you kind of traveled as well because I started doing all of this with the niche blogs. And I think right now I just absolutely went crazy with it. And I started picking up um, used domains and Actually, like I said, when I started uh, in Black Hat, I was using all these domains for basically work that I was creating. And uh, instead of doing that, because I just saw people's private blog networks going down left and right. Uh, and guys, uh, if you don't know, a private blog network is basically utilizing authority domains to link to your uh, your money site to just basically boost the power of one site. And I, I kind of was catching on that, okay, this is, Google's really cracking down on this. I should probably not you do this. You were hated by Pandem, Penguin, and all the animals. Yeah, <laughs> too, many, too many algorithm changes. And I was like, okay, I kind of want to do something with this. And that's when I started discovering affiliate marketing. And I had all these high powered domains. I'm like, well, I might as well turn it into something useful. So over the past five years then I was just basically creating all these niche blogs. And uh, like you, I discovered the power of, uh, you know, keyword research and generating natural traffic and how you can kind of capitalize on that. And uh, just now I'm starting to dabble in the uh, the realm of click funnels. And it's it's very interesting, especially one of the most interesting parts of it to me is the, the backpack feature that I just kind of discovered the other day. Um, wow, it, it's really cool because like you said, it is basically, it, it's a, a ready for you business and you can kind of dive right in and as far as simplicity goes and somebody who doesn't really know where to start quick funnels is a pretty good spot to start yeah one of the tools that i use i don't know if you're interested if you want to take your business to the next level i don't know if you have heard of sam rush oh yeah sam, sam rush you can literally spy your competitors you can see uh like what's their main campaign with the display ad networks on Google AdWords, uh, what are their ads on Google AdWords, if they are ranking for several keywords in which countries, it's a really, really powerful tool. That's, that's an excellent tool. And actually, uh, for anybody who's read my affiliate crash course that I created in the group, you know that that was like the last thing I included like as the must get tool is SEMrush because for spying on your competitors and basically stealing their spot in, <laughs> in Google, <laughs> that's the best way to go about it. Definitely my favorite tool by far. Um, I don't know, yeah. have, you, have you used Majestic at all before? Have you used that one? No, but I have used Ahrefs because sometimes people are like uh, confused between both of them. Mm -hmm. The thing with Ahrefs, if, if you are using or if you are doing SEO, it's 100% focused on SEO, while Sam Rush is focused like on marketing. Like I usually suggest everybody Sam Rush because you can do both on just one tool. Mm -hmm. And if you are a struggle and you are not sure what's going to be your next step, you can just literally spy your computer. I know what he or she is doing and model it. Yep. As simple absolutely. as that. It really is. And guys, if you still uh, don't know where to start, because we do have a lot of new affiliate marketers and anybody who's kind of new to online business, if you don't know where to start, here's two perfect spots, the affiliate crash course and the group. It's pinned to the top of the millennial affiliate entrepreneurs. You can check that out. And like Diana said, um, 
uh, uh, ClickFunnels is one of the most amazing places to really start making money. And you don't have to create a website or really anything like that. It's kind of all done for you. That's Diana, that's worse. is there a, so we're going to, we're going to wrap up where we've hit the half hour mark. Uh, is there anything that you would like to kind of put out there as far as, um, you know, just tips for anybody who's watching this now or later, uh, motivation, anything like that? Oh, sure. First of all, hey, give it a try. You can do it. If I do it, I, I was broke. You know how hard it is to start a business with minus 100K? It's a lot. It's really, really difficult. So I'm not a wizard for sure. There are a lot of opportunities. You need to find your voice. It can be on YouTube. It can be on Twitter. It can be on Instagram. Anywhere you feel comfortable. If you feel like you need to do blog posts because you feel more comfortable that way, just do it. Give it a try. Capture your leads. That's the most important. Remember that this is a business. Take it as a business and be serious and just start now. That's the best advice ever. Just start. Get started. Just start. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, the that, that phrase analysis paralysis i'm so glad you brought that up because uh just just the other day somebody in the group mentioned uh you know their fear of not or their fear of starting because they feel like they have all this information but they they <laughs> just can't pull the trigger and start because they're afraid of not even not even truly afraid of failing but just uh, maybe it's just kind of it, it's just analysis paralysis that's kind of just the best way to to describe it and um Guys, the the best way to to make your money, the best way to make even more importantly your legacy and make a name for yourself is failing. You have to fail, and I think fail failing really does give you a very broad uh, sense and realization of what success really actually means. Um, failing is that's kind of how I even got to where I'm at. I failed so many times. And Diana, I know you've failed many times oh as well. Oh my God, I'm pretty hard. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty hard, bad. hard, pretty hard. <laughs> it, so, but with that, like it, you came back a stronger person. So don't, don't let life beat you up. No matter how many times you get knocked down, get back up and you will succeed. You just got to keep coming back for more. Yeah, you have to trust in yourself. That's one of the most important things that you need to take it serious. Sometimes... Well, one of my favorite words is that you need to make a commitment. You need to make a commitment with yourself. This is one of my tricks. It's a really old-fashioned trick. It's actually in Spanish, but I'm going to reveal it here. Okay, this is my to-do list. I need to make at least one of these six things here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have heard about the 80-20 rule, like 80% oh, yeah. of your revenue it's made just by 20% of what you actually do. So that's my 80-20 rule there. I wrote it down and says like, okay, if I do this, this equals not only money, but mm -hmm. freedom. For me, mm -hmm. the most important thing is freedom. The being, being able to travel, yeah. being able to work wherever I want, whenever I want. So mm -hmm. that's my motivation and my, the commitment with myself. At least I need to make one of those things per day. If I did not make one of those things, I waste my day. So that is a Diana Castillo pro tip to-do list. I, and I do <laughs> too, actually. I, I have a, a whole uh, board on my wall, a whiteboard that I have a whole list that I make every day. And it helps so much. Helps you organize. And another tip, make your bed in the morning. Oh, make yeah. Make your bed in the morning is <laughs> start. Basically, you're starting off your day by completing a task. And it kind of creates this um, uh, mental structure within your mind for the rest of the day to complete tasks and stay organized. So making your bed is an awesome, that's the Levi pro tip for this. <laughs> make your bed. Exactly. Make, make your mom's happy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's something really important. <laughs> that's something definitely really important. So, uh, and with that, we will wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching, asking questions. Uh, and if you weren't able to see this and you watch the replay, just drop a question in the chat and Diana will answer it later. Or I will answer it later. Just direct it to somebody. Thank you guys.
Diana, thank you so much for joining me in this and everybody. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye -bye.